we looked at his impact on the nameless man of Mark 5. We looked at his impact on Adam and Eve, the first man and woman to exist. Remember this if you remember nothing else, people of faith. When Adam and Eve did exactly what God told them not to do, he cursed the earth, he cursed the serpent, but he kept the people. Let me see the hands of those who have ever did exactly what God said not to do. Let me see your hands so I won't feel like I'm by myself. Tell your neighbor, I am being kept by the grace of God. Do you understand that? Here's what's amazing. Some people, if you make one mistake, will throw you away. But God's treasure is keeping those who some people trash. You are kept and held by God, and it is why you should never let the mistakes of your past define the blessing of your future. Say this, I am forgiven. That's liberating news. We looked at the life of Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. And if we learn nothing else, remember this. You are blessed to be a blessing. In fact, I feel like just boasting a little bit. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you ought to be thankful. God lets you stand by me. Because the blessing of the Lord in my life runs over on people. Tell them it runs over on folk. Tell them he's blessed me so much till you blessed just by standing here. Tell them you ought to be happy you standing right by me. Because every time I turn around, he keeps on making a way for me. Amen. Looked at the life of David. Everybody say, David. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. You will always face giants that are bigger than you. You will always face peril and problems that are greater than you are. Dewana, you'll always see issues that are too big for you to handle too big for you to fight but it's not about the fight that's in you it's about the God who fights your battles for you just like God empowered David to fight Goliath God empowers us each and every day lastly ladies and gentlemen look at God's ability to bless places everybody say places Last week, we looked at the Sea of Galilee. Say the Sea of Galilee. This week, we're looking at the city of Capernaum. Everybody say Capernaum. So when folk ask you what the pastor talked about, tell them we talked about God's impact in Capernaum. Yes. Mark, Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10. So, Father, speak now that we might hear your word. Teach now that we might be able to say, surely God had something to say to us. God, take people who are looking for miracles and bless them today. Lord, move in this place in such a way that it would transform the lives of these who are present that it might cause us to leave church saying, what a mighty God we serve. Think with my mind. Talk with my tongue. Stand in my body. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we say thank you. And those who cannot help but love the Lord, say it together, amen. We stand in honor of the author of the words. So if you're physically able to stand, I don't want to bother you, but I do want to implore you, stand. It is our belief that when the Bible is read, God is speaking. Let's hear what God has to say today. Verse 5. When he had entered, what city? Yeah, everybody say it. Say Capernaum. Looks like Capernaum, but it's pronounced Capernaum. Say it again. And when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, 
My servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you under my roof, but only say the word, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Watch verse 9, for I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such great faith. Say amen for the reading. Grab a neighbor by the hand. Hopefully, it's somebody you love and you like. You should have touched them by now. You've had enough time to do it. Grab them by the hand. Look at them and just say, neighbor, I believe God is still a miracle worker. I believe God is still a prayer answerer. Tell them the preacher needs your prayers. All of your amens. Today's sermon subject. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. The grass withers, the flower thereof fades. The word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may take your seats. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and uh, it's like having a pink, spotted elephant at the table. There's going to be wings and things. There's going to be sips and dips. Y'all too holy. There's going to be wings and things. There's going to be sips and dips. There's going to be parlay sheets, trash talk, and folk who go home happy and sad. Because there will not be two winners, there will only be one. It's Super Bowl Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. And some would dare argue, Pam Clayton, that men only shout and rejoice when they are cheering for their team. However, ladies and gentlemen, I argue nothing could be further from the truth. Not long ago when the Alamo city of San Antonio, Texas, Uniqua Graham, I witnessed something that I thought was just spectacular. I'm preaching the word of God. Uh, Mr. Paulette Lewis, I'm doing my best to be truthful to the text and share with people the unswerving, undaunted word engrafted that would save the soul. And as I am preaching, a man about six feet, six inches tall, Del Mark, weighing about 290, 305, just gets up and begins to shout. Hold on, we are Baptists. Every now and then we just shout. But not often do you see a man six feet, six inches tall, weighing about 290, 295, 305, someone, he a big old man. Big enough for you to know that if you have been attacked by him, you're going to need assistance and help. Just shout all up and down an aisle. The man sitting next to him, Craig LeBlanc, never moved a muscle, but this big man shouted and rejoiced. He shouted so much until ushers who were supposed to go and fan him relieved themselves of their duty. They would not fan him at all. He worked up a sweat. He was literally starting to perspire as I talked about God being a promise keeper. How if God made you a promise, you never have to ask if he's going to come through with it. That if he hadn't done it for you, it's just because he hadn't done it yet. And that just because you may be delayed does not mean you have been denied. And how if God has blessed others, he can do the same for you. I preached it, and as I talked about it, he rejoiced and rejoiced and rejoiced and rejoiced. After service, I was shaking glad hands, hugging happy hearts. I love doing that after church. 
and he walked up to me. I'm 6'2", he's 6'6", six, a six, tall up. So I'm looking at this man's chin. I shake his hand, church, I'm 6'2", I ain't never been skinny. If you ever see me skinny, I'm on my way to meet Jesus. Yeah, I ain't never been skinny. I shook this man's hand. His hand was so big, his fingers covered my wrist bone. I was hoping he didn't squeeze me too hard. Are you listening to what I'm trying to say? I looked at him. I said, man, I saw you rejoicing. What made you celebrate like that? What, you know, what, what put a shout in your spirit? I'm a nosy Baptist. I'm trying to figure it out. And here is what he says, Mr. Paulette Lewis. He says, in a hurry, I was diagnosed with cancer. So my mind is thinking, you don't shout when you get diagnosed. That's when you pray. You shout when you get healed. So I thought I misheard him. I messed up. I, mis I misheard him. So I said, excuse me, so, so you've been healed from cancer. He said, no, no, pastor. No, no. And he said, no, no. He said, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer yesterday. So now I'm perplexed, I'm confused like you. How can you rejoice if you were diagnosed yesterday of prostate cancer? So while I got him by the hand, hoping he don't squeeze, I said, well, hold on then. So why are you rejoicing and celebrating like that? He said, because the man you saw sitting next to me has been healed from prostate cancer two times. And if he did it before, he can do it again. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you why there's no room for you to be jealous or envious about what God has done for your neighbor and your neighbor's life? Because what you have seen God do for them, he can do the same thing for you. There were people in here, ladies and gentlemen, who have been healed in their bodies. If Listen, hold on, I ain't got a lot of time. If you have ever been healed in your body, stand at your feet right quick. Hold on, look at these people standing. If you got a neighbor that's seated, tell them if he did it before, he can do it again. If you are in here and you've ever seen God show up for you financially, I'm talking about in a major way, stand to your feet. Look at somebody and tell them, don't be upset with me. If he did it before, he will do it again. If you have ever seen God fight your battle for you, I'm talking about where you didn't have to say a word, but God showed up in the midst of your situation and circumstances and, and literally carried you through. Stand to your feet. Look at a neighbor right next to you and tell your neighbor, he did it for me and if he did it for me he can do the same thing for you. Is there anybody here ever seen God get you out of trouble? I'm talking about some stuff you got yourself into and God got you out. Where y'all at? Stand to your feet in this cathedral. I need to borrow your testimony. Tell your neighbor if if he did it before and he did it for me, he can do the same thing for you. Can you just give the Lord a praise in this place for what he's done for you? Be seated. Be seated. Jesus is in a place called Capernaum. Everybody say Capernaum. It is the hotbed for miraculous activity. Say Capernaum. In its translatory measure, it means village of Nahum. He is in a city, ladies and gentlemen, that is a place of miracles and healing. Every time you see Capernaum in the Bible, a miracle is about to come forth. Peter's mother-in-law is sick with a fever. She's about to die, but she's in Capernaum, and the Lord heals her. A man is on on a stretcher and he's being carried past the showers by his four friends. They can't get him in the front door. They can't get him in the back window. So they go up to the rooftop and tear the shingles off of the house. They let their friend down and Jesus looks up and says, because you've got friends with crazy faith, I'm going to forgive your sin and heal your body. What city was that in? Everybody say Capernaum. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is walking through Capernaum. Capernaum, and as he walks through a centurion soldier with some hundred plus men who obey him says hey listen Lord my servant is at home sick grievously tormented Jesus turns around and says I'm coming to heal him don't you love having a God on your side who doesn't need a diagnosis before he can offer pathology Jesus don't even know what's 
wrong with the servant, but he doesn't need to know what's wrong. He's the God who can make it right. He says, I'm on my way. The man says, pump the brake, hold up, put the car in neutral. You don't have to come to my house to heal him. I'm a man under authority and I understand how it works. All you have to do is speak the word over here and if you say it over here, it'll happen for me over there. Jesus looks and says, I have not seen this kind of faith in Israel because no one believes like you do. He says, let it be like you believe it that your servant is going to be well. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time this centurion got back to his house, the man who was sick was well. Can I tell you why I am preaching this? Because you need to know that the same God he serves, you serves. Can I tell you why I'm preaching this? Because the same word he got, you have. Can I tell you why I'm preaching this? Because I'm sick and tired of ecclesiastical jealousy and envy that plagues people in the pew. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a place for jealousy. You got the same daddy. You have the same spirit. You have the same father. You have the same source. And what you have watched God do for other people, that same God can do for you. I need a hundred of y'all in here who can publicly testify that you ain't got time for jealousy, envy, or anger, or being upset. In fact, I think we ought to practice. Look at a neighbor right quick and say, neighbor, I am not angry about anything God is doing in your life. Y'all ain't talking. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm thankful he has blessed you. I'm thankful God keeps opening doors for you. I'm glad God put keys in your hand, money in your pocket. Y'all ain't talking. Look at your neighbor because I got eight minutes left. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad God keeps blessing you. I'm glad God keeps opening doors for you because if he did it for you, he can do it for me. Just because you had your season don't mean I don't have my reason. I'm going to keep on holding on until my season comes. Who is this for? I need a hundred people who have seen God bless you like crazy. Leap to your feet. And those who have been waiting, I want you to look at them and realize that if God did it for them, if God took care of them, if God fought their battles, if God healed them, if God made a way for them, you don't have to worry about it. You can tell God thank you because he can do the same thing for you. Hallelujah. 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 The central element is the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. So what do we learn? What's in this text that ought to empower and enlighten us? Number one, watch this. The word carries with it the authority of the sender. Everybody say the authority of the sender. Watch this. If the word comes from your mother, it has your mother's authority. If the word comes from the governor, it has gubernatorial authority. If the word comes from the pastor, it has the pastor's authority. But if the word comes from God, it has God's authority. So stop asking people for permission to hold on to God's word because when God says it, it settles it whether you believe it or not. Ladies and gentlemen, this centurion comes to Jesus and he says to the Lord, my servant is at home sick of the palsy. He is grievously vexed with the devil. And he says to Jesus, Lord, I need some help with this one because my authority can't fix this. Footnote, ladies and gentlemen, there is always going to be a place in your life where your authority, your resources, your wherewithal cannot fix it. Is there anybody ever been in a place where you could not help yourself? I cannot fix it. It's beyond my scope. It's beyond my grasp. Hey, brothers and sisters, it's why you need somebody. Watch this. Here's your first shout with more authority than you have. 
Okay, let me share it this way. Let me try it this way. A state trooper from New York cannot give you a ticket in Texas because he's out of his jurisdiction. See, authority is about boundary and jurisdiction. So when you start talking about the FBI, you got to be careful because they can snag you in the United States or abroad. Why? They have authority and jurisdiction. A Beaumont police officer can't give you a ticket over in Vida. Why? He's out of his jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only so much your mother can do. Why? She has maternal jurisdiction. There's only so much some of us can do because we have limited boundaries and jurisdictions. But when you talk about God, God has no boundary. God has no jurisdiction. If it's as high as the heaven, God is in charge. If it's as low and hot as hell, God is still in charge. If it is as wide as the country is broad, God is still in charge. I need 50 of y'all in who believe this. God is still in charge. He is the one who has the authority over whether you get blessed, over what you have, over who gave it to you. God is so in charge. Watch this. He will make your enemy cut you a check and don't even like you. God will make folk open the door that don't even want to see you walk through it. God will bless you when you don't even deserve it. I need a hundred of y'all in here know I'm preaching to you the truth. God does not wait until you get it right in order to bless you. God will bless you when you're wrong so that you want to get right. I need a hundred people in here who have seen God bless you when you were not even blessable. Open doors that you didn't deserve to be open. Put stuff in your path you know you didn't even want or need. I need 50 of y'all just say thank you God for your blessing me. It is within your boundary. It is within your grasp. If it is for you, it is for you. Let me hurry. So Rhonda, there are times in my house I just use paternal authority just to see if it still works. You know, children can be disobedient. but When they obedient, it makes me happy. So my daughter, Simone, who is a senior at Prairie View, is like the assistant domestician at my house. She runs the house when Dory ain't there and sometimes when she is. She just that child that just going to do what she going to do. You have to learn to love that. My son, however, sometimes is in the cut. He just sits and kind of goes with the flow. And his sister bosses him around when she can so sometimes I feel sorry for him and feel like I need to encourage him. So I'll wait until it's time for him to get bossed around. And I'll tell him, come here, Jonathan. Go upstairs and tell Simone I said do this. And ladies and gentlemen, I like listening at the stairwell. I'll go stand at the stairwell of the bird. I'll just listen and see what she got to say. And I'll hear him say, Daddy said do so. No, no, this is how he start off. Go do this. And oh my God, all of a sudden it's World War III. I ain't going to blah, blah, blah. And then I'll hear him say, Daddy said do it. And all of a sudden, the, the movement of her feet start letting me know that my authority still rests well in my house. Because in my house, I am the daddy. Do you understand that? If you can be happy about my little old weak authority over two children, you ought to be shouting about God's authority. Because when God says, let that be, it will be. When God says, I'm going to bless you, you don't have to ask people around you. You are going to be blessed. When God says, halt, it's going to come to a stop. When God says, open, it's going to open. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, when you have the right timing and the right season, you will notice things just work out for you in your life. It's like somebody above you is helping you. Somebody around you is opening doors for you. God just shows you favor. Why? Because he has deemed it and the devil in hell cannot undeclare it. I need 200 people right quick who can say thank you God for a season in my life where I have seen you open doors for me. I have seen you bless me. I have seen you help me. I have seen you lift me. I have seen you carry me on. Ladies and gentlemen, the word carries the authority of the sender. Hold on, number two. 
The word comes with the audacity of the speaker. Uh, hold on, watch this. Listen to me, y'all ready? Watch what comes out of that big mouth of yours. One more time for the sake of clarity. I said, watch what comes out of that big mouth of yours. Okay, read translation. You cannot speak defeat and live in victory. At some point, ladies and gentlemen, what you say will be what you see. So be careful what comes out of your mouth because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay, let me try it another way, third time to charm. If you say it, you may end up seeing it. So watch what you say if that ain't what you want to see. Stop telling your children you bad. Stop telling your children you ignorant. Stop telling them you ain't going to never learn. Speak over their lives. Faith for the future. You tell them you might be here now, but you ain't going to always be there. Every now and then you ought to speak over your own life. I think we ought to practice right quick. Lift your hands and speak over your own life as did Jabez and say, bless me, O Lord, indeed. Expand my territory beyond my wildest dream. Keep your hands on me and bless me oh God. Order my steps. I declare over my own life that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am blessed and not cursed. I am healed and not sick. You ought to lift your hands in this place and declare over your own life. My needs are being met. I trust God with my life. I pray God's blessing over my family why? Because what you say can be what you see. Watch this text. The centurion says, I got a servant at home that's sick. Jesus says, I'm on the way, I'm going to fix it. He says, hold up, don't come to my house. He says, I'm a man under authority. Shmiha is the Hebrew. He says, so I know how authority works. He says, I got servants that work for me. I tell one go, he goes. I tell one come, he comes. I tell one sit, he sits. I tell one stop, he stops. So he says, here's what I want you to do for me. Listen to me. Speak the word only. Everybody say, speak the word only. Okay, I forgot. You, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't read Greek. The Greek here is epi logos monon. Everybody say, epi logos monon. You go to Antioch, you speak in Greek. Watch this. Here's what it means. Talk to that for me. See, here's what he says. He says, I've been talking to it, but ain't nothing happening. But if you speak to it with your authority, then your authority supersedes mine. So speak to the illness of my servant on my behalf. Because if you talk to it, it has to change because of who's delivering the message. Ladies and gentlemen, every now and then you ought to have a Bible and say, God, talk to me. It ought not be a relic on a shelf or an app you don't use in your phone. Every now and then you ought to tell God, speak to me. Because I want you to talk to my situation. Because there are times I become discouraged. Is there anybody in this church who's ever had a moment of discouragement? Just discouraged. It's why you got to have 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 in your mind. And David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. It's why you got to have Psalms 30 verse 5 in your mind. Weeping may endure for a night. But if I can just hold on through the nighttime, joy will come in the morning. Morning. It is why you ought to have Psalms 121 verse 1 in your life. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help doesn't come from any of you. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. It's why you ought to look at your life sometimes and speak a word to yourself because what you will read it, you will soon live it and see it. What God says to Paul in Rome, and we know all things work 
together for the good of them who love the Lord, to them who are the called according. The reason why we live in such defeat sometimes is because we're trying to use our word and our word can only go so far. But the word of our God, ladies and gentlemen, is from everlasting to everlasting. If God said it, that settles it and you ought to celebrate it. I think we ought to practice right quick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God told me to tell you no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper. Tell them the devil wants to see you discouraged, but God ain't going to let discouragement reign. God has a word that says that no matter what the enemy is, y'all talking, y'all looking at me, talk to your neighbor because I'm through. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil may come to steal, kill, and destroy but don't let that discourage you. God has come for you to have life and have life more abundantly. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, I ask God for an abundant life for you. Abundance in health. Abundance in faith. Abundance in prayers answered. Abundance in discipline and growth. I pray that God not withhold anything from you. That every blessing that God has for your life will manifest itself. Who is this for? Can I ask, who is this for? Who can hear God talking to you? If you can hear God, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I speak this by God's permission that God's hand will be rested on your life and not leave. Can I squeeze one more point in? Not only does the word carry the authority of the sender, the audacity of the speaker, but watch this. The word carries the ability of the Savior. This man understood one principle. If he did it before, he could do it again. If what he did in the past is indicative of his power, he could do it again in the present. It meant that he was not limited by time. That God's word is beyond spatial limitation. Which means if God did it once, he can do it over and over and over. Today in the Super Bowl, the reason why folk going to watch the game, I'm going to watch too. I'm going to watch it somewhere. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to watch it. I ain't got no parlay sheet. But I'm going to watch it. Can I tell you a secret? One of them will not be able to repeat this. Because just because you won the last time, don't mean you're going to win the next time. But can I give y'all the shout right quick? God wins. Every time. I'm through. That's enough for today. Your God wins every time. He says to this gentleman, Speak the word only. Everybody say, speak the word. And because the word comes from the right source, it does the right thing. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in an era of biblical illiteracy. Most Christians know more about Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat than they do about the Bible. And I say to you, I'm not trying to beat or bruise you. I'm trying to exhort and encourage you. You ought to find a word every week that's just your word. You ought to look at Isaiah 41 and 10, where God says, I'm with you when you walk through the fire, and I'm with you when you walk through the flood and when other people forsake you I'm still standing there with you you ought to get a word in your belly every week and say this is my word of the week Pastor Adolf because if God spoke it it has to be true I pray that God lets that God lets Galatians 6 rest in your bosom when he said and be not weary in well doing for in due season ye shall reap if you faint not I need about a of y'all who've been waiting on God to do some stuff in your life and it seems like your wait is in vain. Where are y'all? The Bible says, wait, I say on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say on the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it is why the Bible says in the, in the very presence of the enemy, let God fight your battle. In fact, he told Jehoshaphat, the battle that is yours, you think is yours, it belongs
belongs to me. And what I want you to do is spend your time in pure, unadulterated worship. Because when you worship me, I will fight the battle on your behalf. Is there anybody present with at least one battle you don't think you can win? Anybody over here? Anybody right there? Anybody over here? Anybody over there? If you have at least one battle you are fighting and you don't think you can win, stand on your feet right where you are. I want to declare this over your life. The reason why you can't fight it or win it is because you're trying to win it on your own terms. Here's what God says, do Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Lift your hands in this place and tell God, you fight my battle. You see me through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. He was shouting not because of what God had let him go through but because he had healed his neighbor. He had enough faith to know that if God healed his neighbor, he could heal him. Can we do something before we leave? Tell your neighbor, this last shout is for stuff God has done in your life he ain't done in mine yet. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, this last shout is for all of the blessings God has poured on you because he didn't stop pouring when he got through pouring them on you. Can we just do it right quick? I dare you to praise God right here. Like God is doing it for you. Like you are next. Hey, I gotta go.